find somebody you can speak to, make good health choices in your life. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. We tend to be all or nothing. Make little changes one at a time and make your life better. But most importantly, work out your issues with somebody you can talk to. And if you have nobody to talk to, message me on Facebook. I will always be there to try to talk to you the best I can. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Your Five and a Friday. I'm Dr. Glenn Krieger. And today I want to do a follow-up to a podcast episode I did a little while ago with Dr. Robert Trujillo. And he's an orthodontist who's also a life coach. And it's arguably the number one most commented, responded to, messaged episode of the Orthopreneur's Podcast that we've ever done. Now, it, for those of you who haven't seen it, definitely go back and listen to it. It's a little bit long, right? I think it's about 45 minutes or so. But there's something going on in orthodontics today that wasn't going on 10 years ago. It wasn't in dentistry 20 or 30 years ago. Um, life is tougher. Okay, let's be honest. Finding good team members is become nearly impossible if you don't already have them. Um, leading culturally as a as a culture warrior in your practice can be difficult because millennials and Gen Zs uh, may react differently to Gen Xers and older than that. And even millennials and Gen Zs are having a hard time communicating because of the way they were brought up. And this is all statistics. This is studies. This is not me just you know, pontificating here. This is something we know about. So you have a hard time finding the people you want. You've got a hard time communicating with them when you do. The workplace culture has been as bad as it's ever been where people just, you hire them and they don't show up the next day um, or they just leave because you looked at them the wrong way. And combine that with stressed out people who are coming in as patients, um, it's tough. And what we talked about a great deal in that podcast is how a lot of orthodontists um, don't really love what they're doing. And number two, as I mentioned in the podcast before, millennials are the first generation Gen Ys, that don't see themselves in the same job for the rest of their life. Now, that may not apply to you if you're a millennial, but the overwhelming majority of millennials go work for a company, work for two to four years max, maybe five, and then are ready to go on to the next job. The idea of retiring after 30 years with a gold watch is arguably as unappealing to any millennial in the workplace as hitting them in a toe with a hammer. Um, and so here you have a bunch of orthodontists coming out of school facing more stress than ever before, knowing full well that they are not built, they're just not built socially to last 30 or 40 years in a profession, and yet they are. And as I learned from a consultant 30 years ago, she said, when you, when you wake up in the morning and you get in your car and you turn your key and you think about where you're headed, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Is that the place you wanna be going to? And her message at the time was, if it isn't, make it the place you want it to be. And that's great 30 years ago. You had people who communicated a lot like you. Times were a lot less stressful. The dynamic was different. And you could do what you wanted to do. Today, it's different. And many people are putting the key in the car. And they're not very happy about heading where they're heading. And so there are many great offices out there with some of the best cultures I've ever seen who continue to lose team members. And so with a looming recession... Um, economic issues. There may be more people going back into the workplace. However, I just, I, I want you to just do one favor for me. Focus on your mental health. That's all I'm asking. That's the whole point of all of this. All of that preamble was simply to get you to the point to focus on yourself. You need to. If you're one of the very rare individuals who says, ah, I don't need help. I'm as stable as can be. I got an amazing social network. I'm good. I, I don't need any help. I call BS on you. Um, I worry almost never. Uh, I'm 54, almost 55 years of age. My mood doesn't swing much as much as it used to, and I'm pretty easy at, at letting things bounce off of me, and yet I still have a coach. I still had been in therapy, all right? I'm not saying I'm an advocate of therapy per se. I'm not saying an advocate of coaches. I'm saying I'm an advocate of you having somebody you can talk to every day who can help you through things. And I, I'm reading some great books on the subject of longevity, on mental health. And one of the things that, there was a great study done, I think like 1938 at Harvard. They decided they would follow something like 240 people, men, longitudinally over the course of their life. 
It later got joined with another cohort of 400 and something, and they followed them their whole lives. And they found all the things that made them happiest. They, they categorized them into happy and well, and the lowest was sick and, and sad, and everything in between. And those who were happy and well, what they found was they had a network of at least one great friend that they could talk to on a regular basis that didn't include someone who's a part of their family. Okay, think about that. One great friend, at least. It didn't need to be 10 or 15. It needed to be at least one great friend that they could talk to on a regular basis uh, and work through things. So I just want you to have somebody you can talk to. I think a therapist or a coach is great. Some people feel that therapists only talk to create more therapy, and I can't disagree with that. I really do have a lot of luck with coaches and enjoy that side of it. But mental health, if you're not working out, get some workout in, walk, climb stairs when there are elevators, um, eat a little better tomorrow than you're eating today. Do everything you can to help yourself. If you smoke, stop immediately. That's one of the seven factors they found that reduces your happiness and health long-term, obviously. Um, if you drink or they're excessively, and only you know if that's the case, or if you have family history of alcoholism, quit drinking immediately. That was one of the seven factors they found as well. So I'm just telling you, find somebody you can speak to, make good health choices in your life. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. We tend to be all or nothing. Make little changes one at a time and make your life better. But most importantly, work out your issues with somebody you can talk to. And if you have nobody to talk to, message me on Facebook. I will always be there to try to talk to you the best I can. But just find those people in your lives. Thankfully, if you're listening to this and you're an orthodox, honest, chances are financially you're in a position you can afford a coach. Um, and ask in the group. If you're on entrepreneurs, ask them. Anybody got a great coach? And remember, there are entrepreneurial coaches, like I've used Dory Clark in the past. Uh, there are coaches who will help you talk through things, which is great. There are marketing coaches, uh, like I've used Todd Brown or Russell Brunson. You need to find a coach who fits what you need in your life. And I'm not talking about business now, I'm talking about personal, wellness, and how you get to where you wanna be. And there's good people out there. So um, much love to each and every one of you. Please reach out to me if you need anything at all. I'm always here for you. I just wanna wish you an amazing day.